G'day everyone, welcome to this week's Life on the Holes. Um, ooh, sneak peek right here. That was a big day and that is coming up uh, probably in about four to five weeks time. If you wanna see a couple of sneak photos, jump over to the Facebook site, Life on the Holes. Have a look, there's a couple of photos of it. It was uh, something out of Mega Moves, absolutely crazy. And uh, the patrons have had a bit of a look already, but you know, absolutely brilliant. Um, there's a couple of tiny little blooms, but she's beautiful and I'm so impressed. So to see it in full, you're gonna have to go over and have a look at that Facebook site and uh, and wait for the video. It will be a long one. It's gonna be probably a good hour, hour and a half, who knows, and might turn it into a, a mini series. It was so big. The, the whole process was absolutely enormous. Now, a few months ago, with this crazy year that we've had, I received a parcel in the mail and, uh, and it was from a guy by the name of Graham Butler in the UK and uh, and Graham actually I'll just focus on his car there Graham actually makes handmade bespoke pens and he sent me a couple of these honestly life of the hulls pens they are beautiful and I'm so touched mate I, I just cannot believe that uh, that when we received them we sat them on the desk and Janet's been using hers but these are beautiful pens and uh, and you know I'm pretty touched mate so thank you so much you cannot imagine how much I'm using this now I'm at the project uh, planning stage of my catamaran <laughs> so this week I'm gonna be tying in those engine modules a lot of intricate detail in this week's but get into it because it's boat building and if you want to see how this thing turns out you're gonna have to hang around so don't forget to subscribe and like and uh, and jump over to the composite shop as well this is all coming the planning the prep the lifting the loading the mega moves the the things that we had to use to get the beast out of the mold is all coming up in the next couple of months so hang on there's plenty to come and our channel is about to get very exciting. For now, let's get into the boat building. Right, uh, yesterday I glued this in about 20 hours or so ago. It is rock solid. I've removed all the bracing and everything. Now what I need to do is to fill in between the bearer and the module along these uh, bearers here with epoxy just to make sure that I'm actually engaging the module to the bearer and then I'm going to subsequently glass over the top with uh, with vinyl ester resin and basically then I will then be able to paint the top there with uh, the uh, corrosion resistant epoxy paint that I have now down in the end here I also need to fill around the through hole section there so there's quite a bit of work to be done there just with filler I've also got a glue the um these flaps in and uh and and that'll come a bit later on but first thing i'm going to fill in these areas here i'll get around the back there and do a bit of uh tidying up around there and then i'm also going to slide some in underneath the back of the module there and uh and and that'll be pretty much it it's uh it's going to be engaged and in place Okay, so what I've done here is I've actually masked along the bearer and along the actual module and I'm going to feed epoxy, the technoglue, in here and fill this gap so that essentially there is no gap in between the bearer and the module. Then I'll remove the masking tape because I really don't want to contaminate the top of this bearer because I'm going to use vinyl ester and polyester gel coat to actually bond these back together across the top, but the underlying structure is epoxy. It's important you don't trans for the chemistry from one to the other. These flaps are going to go out and I need to chop them in place so they actually bond to the foam bolsters underneath and form a very good seal. And then I'm gonna tie that back in to the bearer itself, up over the top, thereby making it almost one piece all the way around. That's the plan. I'm pretty happy this one's now solid in place. I've now filled in around the um, the bearers here. So that's all connected there now. And in fact, I went home for lunch and that's a 24 hour epoxy and that's already set in three hours. It is about 32 degrees in here right now. So.
Now that these modules are all glassed in, there's a bit of an area I need to deal with, and that's the gap here ver at the very end. Now there is a small bulkhead here. Now it doesn't, it's not required to have a solid bulkhead, but it is required to have some sort of a, um, an area there to stop things falling in to the shaft itself. Now on the original boat, I'll just put a photo off of it now, there was a small um, mesh grate, probably an aluminium or aluminium um, grate that used to go across there and say we had a hose or something here, didn't fall in there into the prop shaft. So very, very important that I have some sort of a, uh, a barrier there. Now I'm more than likely to have a full bulkhead here, but for now, see that area here down here, there's a gap there, I don't want any voids in this boat. So what I've done is I've actually fashioned a couple of um, foam bits roughly uh, just to, to be able to somehow fill that in, uh, ultimately to fill that area there. And uh, it's gonna take a little bit of work to do that, uh, a little bit of hand shaping. And, and this is the really the nuts and bolts detail of building a boat like this. Everyone can fabricate a module, everyone can put a bulkhead in. How you finish it is the critical component of owning and, uh, and building a boat. And, and, and obviously for me, taking pride in something that's finished properly is, is of paramount importance. I don't put this much blood, sweat, swearing and tears into this to do a shit job. So. So fast forward about 45 minutes and uh, these are now shaped. So this will create a nice little infill here. That just makes it look like it's finished. That'll be filled with epoxy and, uh, and obviously glued to the hull side and thereby stopping any movement of the module against the hull. And I've done one for the other side as well here. Still got to do the other or the port side, but for now, you know, they're pretty much done. I'll glue them in tomorrow. And then down here, I'm actually going to fill this with epoxy, with a thickened epoxy and, and create a dam wall along the back here. And then I can fill in also around my through holes. They need to be flanged downwards so that the actual through hole sits on where the masking tape is. I've left this mask because I didn't want epoxy getting on it, but that is now around about that thick there. The through hole will be there. That'll be for the engine um, raw water and this one here for the uh, for the water maker ultimately. So I have two through holes in this section here, another two on the other side and then a number of other ones as I progress through the boat. Right, so I'm going to put these infills in. I'm going to basically epoxy them in and fill this gap and then I'm going to come back and do some restorative work later on. Fill this gap. Ah. Only just fits, eh, Johnny? Well, you could have trimmed it a bit more for more glue to go on. No, I don't need all the glue. I just need to go in. What's going to happen here? So the little simple details like this are the key. I don't want any water or anything to be able to escape down the back of that. And there'll be a bulkhead across this section here that I'll be able to tie it all in. So we've got this flap and we've got to glue that to the foam bearer or to that um, bolster there. So I'm just going to run some epoxy all the way along here. I need something to wedge it. need a lot because this is going to be glassed over the top as well. Right. And down in here, this flap here has to have some glue on it here too, Johnny.
It's that time of year again, guys, where I get to complain about the heat. It is 39 outside the tent. I'm not even gonna check it in here because it is disgusting in here today. It's uh, Friday, 20th of November, and Jesus, it's awful. We got a big summer again coming up. Down in the engine room here, you're sick of me talking about it. I'm sick of thinking about it. I go home at night wondering how I'm gonna integrate these things into place, and I think I'm finished. I've now laminated the bearer to the module to the to the bolsters to the module again and ultimately laid two more layers over the top of that and it's looking pretty neat let's have a look so yesterday arvo i finished the laminations of these now this is still looks a little bit rough because it still hasn't been painted out i'm going to rip this peel ply off and just have a look at my handiwork i think you'll agree that uh this has actually worked out quite well it has taken me a good couple of months to get this whole region done and yeah, is it too much effort? Is it just overkill? I don't think so, to be honest. This is where the power plant's gonna sit. I can't spend enough time in here to make sure this is spot on. You've already seen underneath the bilge, and I'll just show you here, remind you of the flow coating that went on underneath this module. Now this module's in place. It is firm, solid, and the bearers luckily are separate to the module, and then they've been integrated back in, and I think I'm pretty happy with that result. Let's have a look at, let's pull the peel ply off and have a good look at it. So it was a hot afternoon down in here yesterday. It got up to about 38 yesterday, and today it's already 39 out there. It's only uh, yeah, right on 10 o'clock in the morning. But here, I've got to, to reveal this in here. This is now all one piece. Pretty bloody happy. It's been a big job. But uh, I've got to say, it doesn't get any better than that. Um, essentially that is now totally laminated in. It's my job now to make this cosmetic. How good can I make it look? It all depends on how much time you're prepared to spend polishing and wet sanding or flow coat, or it's gonna be gel coat obviously with wax added because I'm applying it externally so that the wax will rise. And then I'm gonna wet and dry polish it back to see if I can make it look almost as good as that. Almost as good as that might have to do me at this stage because I am falling way behind, spending a lot more time in here than I initially anticipated. Yeah, that's so neat. Look, I mean, it's as smooth as a baby balm and uh, it's just never gonna get as strong as it is now. It is epoxied, filleted, finished, and uh, absolutely beautiful, pretty happy. I don't know how I can get so excited about having a finish like that, but that is just amazing. Part of the demolding process means I've got to take that pallet rack down. That's been there since day dot, and uh, it needs to be removed because I can't get the truck in and out straight with it in place. So I've actually been able to move the, maneuver the truck in around it, but to really set the truck up for lifting, I need to remove that pallet rack and that's just gonna have to be gone for good now. I've got a table set up over here with all my gear on it. And uh, I'm pretty much, I, it's just a place where I put stuff on and uh, ultimately it just ends up a mess and I spend more time cleaning up than I do actually putting stuff away. So I'm better off to follow that process. So that's gonna have to be pulled down. There's a lot of wires, uh, data cables, electric cables lighting everything has to come down so it's been a bit of a process pulling that apart and i'm gonna have to get onto it now and get it all down that's about 40 friggin degrees in here now and uh i've just had a big dental operation uh, with some bone grafts and stuff so i'm pretty i'm pretty shitty at the moment and uh, probably drooling at the side of my mouth but you know at the end of the day it's still got to get done 